After three months on the ground, I'm finally leaving the Eurasian continental mainland. But first, here's a recap of my route across the Middle East and Europe. I traveled by car from Central Asia across Iran, starting at Mashhad in the east, through Isfahan in the center, and ending in Tabriz in the west. I then traveled by bus across Turkey to Istanbul, and then across the Balkans to Croatia. From Croatia, I took a catamaran to Venice, and then trains across Europe to Calais, France. Now I'm finally going to leave the Eurasian continent for that island of the North Atlantic, the United Kingdom. The Eurotunnel, or the Channel as it's sometimes called, allows trains to travel under the English Channel from Paris to London in only 2 hours and 45 minutes. Cars and buses can use the tunnel too, by driving onto a rail-mounted shuttle. And thus I return to the English-speaking world. In London I meet my friend Alan, who will be traveling with me for the next several weeks. There's lots of things to do in London that are quintessentially English, like visiting Westminster Abbey, feeding the pigeons, trying to meet the Queen, and eating fish and chips. And nothing is more English than grabbing an after-work pint. We kind of missed high tea time because at four o'clock we were drinking ciders in the pub for the last three hours. We stumbled into Marks and Spencer's and found tea, but there are crustless sandwiches. It's like coming down off your ciders tea, I'd say. <laughs> Ready to pour? Go to pour it already. Low tea. This is the British Museum, which hosts one of the most extensive collections of antiquities in the world. No corner of the earth was safe from the marauding Victorian collectors who dug up and then carted off to London everything they could get their hands on. I'm told that behind this thick screen of tourists is the Rosetta Stone. I'm here in Greenwich just outside of London to visit the Prime Meridian. I'm at the Royal Observatory, uh, so I'm at exactly zero degrees longitude. Unfortunately, the Meridian Line is closed for the day, so I have to satisfy myself with being just outside of the Meridian. And right behind me, you can see the City of London. Alan and I take a short trip to Cambridge, hosting one of the world's oldest surviving universities. My friend Ping Tao joins us, and we decide to go for an afternoon punt on the River Cam. We each take a turn trying to maneuver the boat down the river by shoving off the bottom with a long pole. It's easy to tell the professionals from the amateurs. Alan and I have friends who live just outside of Cardiff, so we decide to make Wales our final destination in the UK. Those are damsons just starting up there, and damsons were plums that the Romans brought, uh, and they escaped 2,000 years ago. With improvements in agriculture, opportunist eating gave way to seed crops, which became the staple part of man's diet. Dave and Clive take us for a lovely romp in the heath to introduce us to the Welsh countryside. We also visit several ruined castles, of which there are many in Wales. I'd like to spend more time exploring Britain, but our transatlantic crossing sails from Southampton tomorrow, so Dave and Clive drive us home for our last sleep in the Eastern Hemisphere.